Hi, Lee. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Congrats on an amazing series. Um, I started watching a few episodes and I'm definitely hooked. Um, oh, good, good, good. Yeah. So can you tell us about your role as Brother Day as this clone of the Cleon's uh, genetic dynasty? Well, when I, when I, you know, think about this role, I'm not really playing a man. I'm playing a series of men who for a time in their life uh, take on the role of the emperor of the, you know, galaxy, which is an extraordinary abstract idea that this, this human can control the lives of trillions of people that he, you know, decides who lives and who dies. He decides which planets prosper and which planets work, which planets suffer. He um, has, you know, a technology that makes it possible for him to strike um, this balance over this extraordinary area of space. Um, but what interests me really is this kind of series of individuals who uh, who find themselves taking on that role very much like an actor taking on a role like you've got brother day brother dawn and brother dusk right and brother day is always looking towards brother dawn saying he here are the lines here's your blocking this is the costume here are the props and when you inherit this role, this is how you are the emperor of the galaxy. And he's always looking at Brother Dusk and saying, you made some mistakes when you were the emperor. And now that I'm sitting on the throne, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be smarter. I'm going to be braver. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to distinguish myself among this series of clones. So it becomes like this. Are you ever of two minds of something? Like you've got the mind that you've been conditioned to, to, uh, how to understand the world within, right? But then you've got this other voice to be like, well, this doesn't quite feel right. And this actually feels more like the truth. That's, I think, um, the experience that the Cleons are having, where there's this conditioned reality that they, that they are the emperor of the galaxy, that they have managed to cheat death by cloning themselves, that they will live forever and kind of preside over this growth, prosperity, and peace for all time. But inside, I think that there's this, and I think Harry Seldon's math absolutely plays a factor in this. I think it helps them realize this, that, that they are individuals, that they have a sentience and an identity that is that is separate and apart from any other individual. Um, uh, I think the show very much is about what it means to be a human. Uh, and you look at all these different characters who have, you know, in their own ways, figured out a way to cheat death so that we can move through time in this way. And, um, and I think David Goyer has really set the stage where we can investigate that stuff of, of human nature in this context. I'll let you, please answer a question because I'll ramble on and on. You know, I'm in junket mode now, so. <laughs> um, you know, your, your character is struggling with, you know, science versus politics. And did you have any life imitating art moments while filming? Life imitate in, in what way? Like uh, how my life Im imitated being the emperor of the galaxy? Daily. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah. So, well, just um, in what's going on, you know, in society now, as far as, you know, just, just kind of these, these power struggles politically and um, science-wise. Well, I think it's, I, I, you know, this is one of the things that I love so much about our show is that we don't, we, um, I don't feel like we make conclusions about about human nature. I think we open the investigation. And if you, by taking the story off planet Earth in the 21st century, we're not t you know we're not we're not explicitly discussing American politics, the coronavirus, climate change, um, you know any of the number of things that we here today are concerned about you know, with our various conflicting politics and stuff. If you take it all, you know, you take it in this abstract way, we can discuss our values 
um, we can discuss our values, what's important to us, what it, you know, what what does math mean? What does it quantify? You can count the minutes, but does that really give you an accurate picture of the change that's taken place between the minutes? What is better suited to be explored, you know, through the realm of spirituality? Um, I, th I think that it's like if we remove the triggers that we have in, you know, which has become such a, you know, circular, frustrating conversation these days. I, I think it provides us with an opportunity to, like, together with all of our different perspectives, um, investigate the thing that we care about most which is, you know, th that life stuff. Definitely. And um, this um, translation from Asimov's books to the big screen, um, there's so much inclusivity. Uh, what was that like for you, seeing the gender flipping of some of these characters uh, into these roles and just having an overall global inclusive uh, set that you're working on? It feels good as hell. You know, it feels great. I can't imagine anyone other than Lula Bell playing Gail Dornick. I can't imagine anyone other than Leah Harvey playing Salvor Hardin. I, you know, now after shooting the season, I'm saying this, I'm not thinking it, I'm feeling it. It doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? When we're talking about, you know, who plays what roles and stuff, this is, this is, as it should be, in my opinion. Definitely. Well, I'm looking forward to the rest of the uh, episodes in the series, and congrats again on a phenomenal uh, project. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to, to chat with me today. Thank you. Bye-bye.